Today we're going to be covering trigonometric ratios. Your essential question is why would knowing trig functions be useful? The first thing we need to go over is what exactly are trigonometric ratios? So if you've ever looked at your scientific calculators that you guys have used um, whenever you guys were in middle school and you took the algebra star, there's um, most kids when they first see it think it's funny because there is a sin button, but it's not sin, it's actually sine. And sine will always be opposite over hypotenuse. And I know you don't understand what that means right now, but you will in just a little bit. Another one of the buttons that you saw by sin was cos, and that actually stands for cosine. And cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The last funny button that you've seen before was the tan button and that stands for tangent. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. There is an acronym to remember this, and it's called SOCATOA. So all that means is that um, sine is opposite. over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. That is an acronym that you can use in order to remember um, what each of them are. Um, you will always have access to formula charts or I will give you the formula if I forget formula charts. Um, so it's not something that you necessarily have to memorize, but sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what does all that mean? Um, I'm going to show you what that means now. So we're going to look at the applications of the trig ratios and we use them for right triangles. So here's an example um, of a right triangle you might use it for. So here's a right triangle um, and whenever you take the sine, cosine, and tangent of something, you're taking the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle measure and they're used on right triangles and the angle measure is either of the two that are not 90. So you will never, ever, ever take the sine, cosine, or tangent of 90. It will be one of the other two angles on a right triangle. So first, we're going to look at finding um, the measure of angle D. So this one right here. And you can take the sine of angle D, the cosine of angle D, and the tangent of angle D. So in order to do that, um, we need to figure out what the opposite adjacent hypotenuse is. But first, let's just remind ourselves um, what sine, cosine, and tangent are. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So whenever we do this, we're going to look at it from angle D perspective. The only thing that will never, ever, ever change is where the hypotenuse is because that's not going to change. But opposite and adjacent will change depending on which angle you were looking at because all that opposite means is across from and all that adjacent means is right next to. So across from or next to one angle would be different if you're talking about the other angle. 
but the hypotenuse won't ever change. So in this problem, our hypotenuse is five, and that won't change. So we can go ahead and fill in a portion of these ratios. We can do the denominators of both sine and cosine. So the hypotenuse is five. Then we need to figure out what's opposite and what's adjacent. So whenever we do that, um, the opposite one is kind of similar to how we find hypotenuse. You're gonna start in the angle you're talking about and you're gonna draw straight up the center of that angle and it's gonna point to your opposite side. So this will be my opposite. So we can go ahead and fill out um, the rest of sine and part of tangent. The next thing we need to look at is adjacent. And adjacent just means right next to. There are only two numbers right next to D and one of them is the hypotenuse. So it can't be this one. So it has to be this one. So this is adjacent, and we can go ahead and fill in the rest of our ratios. So these are our ratios for how we could possibly solve um, what that angle is for the sine. And we'll tell you more, well, I'll tell you more about that in a little bit, um, but we need to figure out the other three of our trig functions whenever we look at angle G. So I'm gonna erase the opposite adjacent stuff. Now here is the triangle that we started with and we're going to look at angle G. And whenever we look at angle G, our hypotenuse of course did not move. So it's gonna be in the same spot. We don't even have to think about that. That's our hypotenuse. But then whenever we look at our other ones, our opposite and adjacent, they are now changing. So remember to find opposite, you start in the angle you're looking at and you're gonna draw right down the middle of that angle and it will point to your opposite side. And then adjacent is just the one that's the closest to it. And we have this one that's the closest to it and this one, but this one is our hypotenuse, so it can't be that one. So three is now our adjacent. So let's write our trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent of G. Now we just need to fill in with our pieces. Um, we can start with opposite since that's what sine starts with. And don't forget sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we can fill in our opposites. Our opposites are now four. So anywhere you see an O, you write a four. Then we have hypotenuse. Our hypotenuse is still five. So anywhere you see an H, write a five. And then we have adjacent. So anywhere you have an adjacent, write a three. And those are our six trig ratios for this one function. You will be given one of these on your test and I'll just ask you for one random one. It'll give you a triangle and it'll ask, what's the cosine of D? And, or it'll give you a different one and it'll ask, what's the sine of G? Um, so you have to know how to set them up. You won't ever be asked to fill in all six, Sorry about that, I had a phone call. Um, now that we've done the applications of trig, how do you actually solve a triangle using trig ratios? Um, so that's the next thing we're gonna cover. So your steps are, number one, you're gonna label the different sides as opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Then you're gonna identify which function that we're going to use to solve it. So are we using sine, cosine, or tangent? You're gonna write the equation and then we're gonna solve it. And lastly, you're gonna have to put it in a calculator. You cannot do this without a calculator. You have to have a calculator that can take sine, cosine, and tangent of angles. And that, that they have to be able to take um, the sine, cosine, and tangent of angles in degrees. My calculators can do that and I'll show you how to change that in a little bit whenever we go to solve this problem. So what if you have an example that looks like this? So this is an example of a problem that you might find on a test. It tells you the hypotenuse is 36 feet and that this leg is X feet and that the measure of this angle is 35 degrees. So the very first thing that you wanna do is label the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse and the hypotenuse, but opposite side, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the easiest because our 90 degree angle will point at it so 36 is our hypotenuse. 
Then we need to look at our opposite, and since we're looking at 35 degrees right here, which is the angle we are given, if you draw a straight line right across from it, it points to your opposite side. And then your adjacent side has to be right next to it, so it's either this one or this one, but 36 is already your hypotenuse, so it is not that one. It is the x feet is your adjacent. So now that we have all of our sides labeled, the next thing we want to do is identify the function. So the way that we do that is we look at the information that is given. We are given the hypotenuse and we are given the adjacent. So from our function, and which one has an A and an H in it? And it is cosine. So we're going to take the cosine. And remember you always take the sine, cosine, and tangent of a degree. So the cosine of 35 degrees is equal to, and the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is x over my hypotenuse, which is 36. So this is my equation that I wrote. After I identified the function, which was cosine, I went ahead and filled in my equation. And if it helps, you could have written um, beforehand, you're going to take the cosine of an angle and it's equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And then you just fill in the angle adjacent and hypotenuse, which is exactly what I did. The angle was 35, my adjacent side was x, and my hypotenuse was 36. Now we need to solve for x. Um, and my 36 is being divided by my x, and I need to make that go away. Since being divided, you multiply both sides by 36. So then we have 36 times the cosine of 35, and that is what is equal to x. So at this point, you would put that into your calculator. You do not want to do it ahead of time because with rounding and stuff like that, you can mess it up a lot. So it's a lot better to do it this way, and once you have it this way, then put it in your calculator. So you will need to get a calculator, and I do suggest that you do this in class so that you can follow along with the calculator. Um, so I have my calculator, and the very first thing that you need to do anytime that you pick up a calculator for trig functions is to change it to degrees. All calculators are automatically defaulted to what we call radians, and it's just another way of measuring an angle measure. Um, you'll learn a lot more about it in pre-cal, and you'll learn a little bit about it whenever we do our circle unit, but um, otherwise, we don't use radians a whole lot in geometry, if at all, but it is used a lot more in the real world. So radians are just another way to measure angles, just like um, some people use feet and some people use meters. So it's to measure length. It's just another way of measuring angles. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to press mode, which is right here next to your second button on your calculator. You want to press mode. All right, so I have minimized your notes so that you can see the calculator and the notes at the same time. So what we pressed was mode on our calculator, and I do suggest you write this in your notes so that you don't forget. And then on your calculator, you see over here where, where it says radian, and then it says degree. You need to arrow over to degree. So you would press the arrows until you got on top of degree and degree was flashing. So the next thing you would do is arrow over to the degree. Then once you have it over here and it's flashing, you want to press enter so that it actually shifts over to degree. So now my calculator is in degree, but you're kind of stuck in this screen. So the way you get out of any screen that you're stuck in is you want to hit quit. And since that for, well, on my calculators, it would be blue, I think. But this calculator, actually, all of the buttons are in the exact same spot. They're just colored differently. So you would press second and then mode to quit. And it takes you back to your regular screen. So now that we have changed our calculator to degrees, we can now enter this in here. And it's very easy. After you change it to degrees, you just literally write what it says. So 36 times and then the cosine, which is right here, of 35. And you don't even necessarily have to close the parentheses. I usually do just to be safe. But um, as long as your trig function is the very last thing that you write and there's nothing else after it, um, you don't necessarily have to close the degrees. 
So it's 29.48, but my next number is 9, so 0.49. And you're, yes, you're going to have to round. With trig functions, if you're finding a side, you always want to round to the closest hundredth. So it would be two decimal places. Since this is 9, the 8 will round up to 9 as well. So 29.49. and these are feet, do not forget your units. Now we're gonna do one more example on the back. First thing we need to do 